Hey there, so I am Aaron. I'm the movie professor. This is Matthew. I don't know why you have me introduce myself every single time. I don't have any tag. Gotta have tag. Gotta get no. Jazzy. Well, <clears throat> I'm Matthew, and that's it. Well, that's I don't have a channel. That's I just, enough. Like, come in and <clears throat> do stuff here from time to time. <clears throat> uh, so. Yeah. Originally had a podcast that we called Faded Black, which was based on the 80 slasher film <clears throat> with Dennis Christopher. And uh, we ran with that for a while and had some fun with it. <clears throat> you went up to Ontario. Yeah. yeah. You're back for a bit, and now we're kind of rebranding it, restarting it, redoing it. And we started last week <clears throat> as kind of like a, the, the subheading for uh, Fade to Black, was a Book 19 special. And if you haven't checked out that podcast, please do so. We talked about Nail Gun Massacre, and we had a lot of fun time. last week. <clears throat> what, a week? Two, two weeks ago, right? I started, like, the Nail Gun Massacre like, <clears throat> before you left. So. Yeah, so it was about, at least three weeks ago. Because, yeah, yeah I, was, I was in London for a couple weeks. Uh, but, uh, so, yeah, we talked about Nail Gun Massacre. We had a blast talking about that movie. We talked about some other things on that podcast as well. So today is our rebranding, restarting of this podcast as the Buck 19 special. And uh, we kind of dug that when we uh, when we did it. We're like, oh, that's, that's a really cool name. It's actually probably a little bit better for some of the type of stuff that we talk about than, uh, <clears throat> than actually, uh, you know, Fade to Black. Yeah. You, know, you know, Fade to Black is cool. <clears throat> but we're coming right back. We got an, a special Italian edition for you today. Uh, so we have, for Spoiler Theater, which is still going to be part of this podcast, we're going to be talking about Andrew Bianche's Barrel Ground, which we watched the 88 Films edition of. Uh, we'll let you know about that as we go through. We're going to be talking to Jallos today, actually. Uh, so I guess it's Jallet, right? Jallet. Yeah. <clears throat> and um, that is Lucio Fulci's Lizard and a Woman's Skin. And Jerry Argento's, uh, you know, usually harder to find last classic, it's considered, uh, Four Flies and Grey Velvet. And we're going to be talking about a bit, a bit of other things today, and we'll work that out as we go along and uh, see how this new format works out. We'll see you in a second, and uh, we'll be back, back with, uh, <clears throat> hopefully, my voice being a little better than that. And uh, prepare f to sit down for a, a nice, huge helping of the uh, of the Buck Nadine special. See, this is where you usually say something. Well, no, because this, I don't usually do, like, end segment things until we get to the very end. I do stingers, and if you start... Forcing me to do three stingers. Flowing seamlessly. All right. Dude, if I start having to do three <laughs> stingers per video, then I pretty much gotta get a notebook and start being like, "What was that line from uh, oh, no. Burial Ground?" Oh, let me just get like a the <laughs> Grey Velvet line. Oh God, what the hell was that lizard skin line at the end there? Oh man, what was that? Oh, the mask. Well, we'll get to that. Ugh. Creepy. Watch in the that dark. Mask, that'd be useful right now. Oh, that'll be really useful. So today in Spotter Theater, we're going to talk about Andre Bianche's uh, film Barrel Ground. Now, before we get into that, I want to mention that uh, I actually have seen a few Bianche films before. Uh, this was Matt's first Bianche film. Last one. <laughs> Don't go spoiling your thoughts on you. And uh, I saw Strip Nude for Your Killer, which uh, if you watch, there's a really good interview. You got to admit, there's a really good interview on the Barrel Ground Blu-ray. Well, yeah. Excellent. Called WTF. And there's a WTF for a reason, which you'll get into it. We'll get into it after. We, we uh, actually talk about, we actually spoil the film. Uh, but in Strip Nude for Your Killer, it's like a jello with all the plot taken out. So you get all the sleeves and all the murders, and none of that plot <laughs> getting in the way. So exploitation Aaron would love that. <laughs> Forget which one we're actually reviewing, though. We are reviewing Barrowgram. But I want to give like a, kind of like a, an introduction to Bianca. Bianche, as a director, is not up there with uh, like with Nargento or Fulci. He's not quite on, on that level. <laughs> uh, or maybe even a Bruno Mattei uh, type of level. You'll be introduced to his films later. He's done movies like Zombie 3 and Rats, Night of Terror. 
Um, yeah, those oh. those those are things. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, right now let's get into Bear Ground. Bear Ground is a movie that starts is bad. So let's <laughs> say that again. Um, it starts immediately. <clears throat> it starts immediately. Like there's no, like you you're not gonna get lost in the deep intricate plot of Bear Ground. I got lost. Well, I mean you might get lost, but <clears throat> so do you want to start talking about it? Uh, we should all clean our glasses at the same time. Glasses cleaning time. Uh, mm -hmm. Probably don't get piped today. It's over there. Uh, a guy, a scientist, discovers the secret. Never really said what it is, but something about. Yeah, we see we see him read out some kind of he's old. He's like, thing. "Oh my god, <laughs> could it be true? It can't be true." Then he like walks to the, like he goes. An extended walking sequence, and he finds dollar store zombies. <laughs> dollar store, the summer did. And some, yeah, but not until later. Um, and then he's attacked by dollar store zombies. Um, we then cut to the actual film, which is all of his friends, uh, all of his rich, interesting friends who are all like younger and more interesting, despite the fact that he looks like Alan Moore. <laughs> Um, are like, wow, we can't wait to, like, to see what our friend came here to, like, asked us here to tell us. Um. You never understand why he's the friend. It's kind of like, remember Puppet Master, when they go up and he, and they go see their, their friend, their dead friend? Yeah, but they hate him. <clears throat> yeah, just they want to make sure he's dead. So yeah. you can kind of get sort of why they got up to see These that are, like, guy. rich, this like, odd <laughs> people who are just, like, we're gonna go see the, like, weird, hugely bearded scientist. Who lives in the mountains. Maybe it's like Dr. Scott from like uh from Rock or Picture Show where he's like maybe he's a mentor or something. I guess. <laughs> That's where we'll go we'll go with that. He's maybe uh, his friends and they go to his house and they're like, What's going on? Uh, I wonder why he called us here. Uh We then, should introduce the characters first though, before we go I don't remember any of their names. There's the blonde girl and her boyfriend Mark. <clears throat> yep, okay, I remember Mark. The Mark's kinda like the is the guy that we, I guess, we're supposed to focus on, but not, not really, because really. there's the other guys that are actually more interesting. Okay, there's the dark-haired girl, and uh, her and her boyfriend, and there's yeah. the other family. There's a family with a, a slightly older dark-haired girl, uh, both voluptuous Italian girls, yeah. and uh, and her husband uh, with the, the mustache, right? No, her husband has. Oh no, Hartman's the one that, the guy with that mustache. Yeah, he's the one with like the red hair. <laughs> and they got their ten year old son as played by a twenty six year old uh little person or midget? Yeah. What, what's the right word? What's the right correct word? I'm not sure. <clears throat> uh creepy dude. <laughs> he's, he looks little really creepy dude. like spooky. Diminutive. He's got like really intense eyes and he's like clearly not ten. <laughs> oh, I had to see it so clearly not that. Um, he is scary look. Mom, also it's like if the awful. dude from from Nightmare from uh, Twin Peaks, if that if that guy from Twin Peaks went and yeah. played somebody's son, it wouldn't work. And it's I read up on him a bit, and he said oh. apparently he's known for aside from being sh small in stature for look, for looking creepy, looking like a, a pint sized version of Dario Argento. Uh, that, I read that somewhere. That's not my words. But they said that that's what he looks like. Um, so, he's creepy. Really uh, creepy. Harry Jones is all like creepy. No. <clears throat> um, they uh, have sex a bunch. Pretty well, not, much. Not, not, the, not the kid. <laughs> no, I mean, he wants to. <laughs> the other two couples are. He's like this. He's like, Mama. <laughs> it's a really bad dub. Yeah. It's a, it's a horrible dog. But I'm he's guessing like, it would have been otherwise. If you've ever seen like, mom, like, mom. the anime Italia, um, he's literally like the character Italy. He's got the like, Mama, can't we set them on fire? <laughs> it's very like yeah, bad nice. Italian accent. Uh, <clears throat> and the cool thing is that the, their friend is not invites them up there. You don't see him anywhere. You just see like the the maid and the servant who looks like, like oh, a I don't know where he is. He's been gone for like a day or two. <clears throat> yeah, and they're just like I guess we'll have sex in his room. <laughs> That's what they do. They put the kid to bed, and all three couples have sex. We only see it's two. It's really confusing actually because like 
You got one couple with like a dark haired girl and a mustachioed oh. man, and one couple with a dark haired girl and a dark haired non mustachioed man. And like they cut in between uh Two. like the sex scenes. Hey, you didn't realize so, this was a No, <laughs> because they were like having a sex scene and it cut and it showed like another like the dark haired girl having a sex scene. <laughs> And she turns, and he doesn't have a mustache anymore. And I'm like, what? And it's a different girl now. And I was like, oh? Yeah. And then the door mysteriously opens using magic, and then Michael spends five minutes like walking up to the room. Well, if you've ever witness. seen any of his movies before, he loves his nudity. Yeah. So he wanted to make sure the nudity got in there. And does he ever? The blonde girl doesn't get naked. <clears throat> I was no. really surprised by that one. The next day, the very next day, they get up. Two of them go out into the grass to have sex, <laughs> yeah. and the family, uh, like, looks at a the place where they're holding the statues. We um, have to say, we just, rewind. <clears throat> well, one of the couples having sex, their son, creepy dude, walks in. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, Michael walks in, and he's, look, he just... Rather than staying in bed and putting the covers over them, the mother gets up out of the bed. Completely naked. Completely naked. Runs like halfway across the room. Picks up a robe. Yeah. And she doesn't put it on. She just like puts it over herself. She, she doesn't put it over her breast. No, she's just like, Michael, go back to bed. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, so they're all having sex in the garden when, <clears throat> oh, snap, zombies pop out. Dollar store zombies. <laughs> well, we start to get some better zombies. This well, way. it's more when the second couple gets attacked that better zombies appear. Mm -hmm. Um, so they get attacked, and these zombies are like, like silly oaths, so they can get away pretty fast. Pretty Did easily. you recognize that there's a zombie there? It's a Frankenstein. <laughs> that comes in. Mask that mask comes mask. in when uh, the second couple gets attacked, because uh, the second couple <clears throat> then gets attacked. But like once again, they're pretty slow. So, uh, she gets her, the blonde girl, who's part of the second couple, gets her leg caught in a bear trap. She's like a lazy bitch, so every single time he opens it up, uh, like, she doesn't she, like he'll, it. She, he'll open it up to here, and she's got time to take her leg out, and she just won't move it, so I'll have to, like, drop it again. Um, so some, some zombies approach, and for yeah. the first one, he takes... A fight and says, here, let's try let's, let's enact the zombie coming. Oh, oh no! Well, to be fair, the first, no, the first one. Supposed to like take my hair. <laughs> oh well, that doesn't happen until after because the first <laughs> yeah, he one. He takes him. He takes like a, a big pitchfork. That was cool, actually. When you uh, that. but here's the thing: what do you do with a pitchfork? Yeah. What he does, smack, and it goes, <laughs> crushes and like Goomba <laughs> stomps away. Um, then he goes to the second one and he tries to like stab him, but like the second one's like, nope. And he grabs it, and he forces that out of his hands. And it's the first time we get, like, an inkling of an idea that will that'll be followed up on later, is that these aren't you, the regular type zombies that we're used to seeing in films. This is the one thing that really works. These zombies are actually have some of intelligence. But it's, like, weird because it's varying, <clears throat> like, all the time. Some of them will be really intelligent. Some of them will just be, like... Well, that's, like, real people. <laughs> uh, um, so this one starts strangling them. Uh, tries to start strangling him, but... Obviously, the, you can't see it the mask, so he has to put his hands on the, the hand zombies. Yeah, he has to, like, guide through. him to it. Um, but then, thankfully, the other couple comes by with their large rocks and breaks their paper mache heads. That's really cool. I like that sequence. Uh, so they're saved. Everyone's good. Except for the family, who... Um, so they take her foot out, oh, yeah. and there's n her boot isn't broken. She's not bleeding at all. And later on, they will check on her foot, and I'll, I'll, I'll just like skip hit her. She's bruised. So now the, the bear trap has bruised her ankle, but it hasn't, like, got through the skin of even her boot. Jesus. <clears throat> um, so the family is in their little, like, area where the statues are. And, like, the, ra the guy randomly has a gun. Uh, zombies start invading after, like, Michael goes... Mama, Mama, this cloth smells of death. How do you know the smell of death? Yeah, they're <laughs> like, what a weird child you are. Yeah. So, um, 
the husband tries to take out zombies by shooting them repeatedly in the chest. Uh, that doesn't work, so they just run no. away, and he gets murdered. Yeah. Um, and every time that the Michael, the l- little kid, he goes to hug his mom, yeah. he go he hugs, just puts his head right right on her breast, and that's, that's really creepy. Uh, it's gonna be important later. Yeah, um, but have you know? Did you notice that going through? Yeah. Him? Well, it's. At this point, Matt's like, how come they're all wearing robes? How come zombies aren't done yet? Yeah, like, all the zombies are wearing robes, even the one that look more recent looking. Some that are just, like, gray people with, like, oatmeal on their face. (laughs) We'll find out more about that later. Um, so, everyone gets back inside, uh, after setting two zombies on fire with, conveniently, two buckets of green paint and lighters. Um, they're able, like, the girl... And Michael are able to get back upstairs. Uh, Evelyn's the girl. That's Evelyn, the... okay. They they try they close themselves off, and uh, they go upstairs, and they watch as the zombies are outside, just being like banging on the door, uh, trying to get in, but it's not working. Uh, so the, start... they meet up with the maid and the the. Waiter guy, the, the big, butler, big Peter the, the huge butler, hospital looking dude, <clears throat> um, and he's like, maid girl, who is still for some reason serving refreshments during. <laughs> she uh, really takes being a maid seriously. That's yeah. Her. Okay. Uh, uh, she's like, go check the other floors, so. She goes out. Um, and she does it. She's not like screw you, which is what I yeah. Do she she goes to the like pitch dark place and goes with the. Uh, with a candle, and she sees that there's, like, she almost thought that there was one inside, but it wasn't, it was just, like, the wind blowing, because the window's open. And she goes to go and, like, close the window. This is one of my favorite scenes in this entire film. This is one of the most hilarious scenes in the entire film coming up. It's cool. Um, <clears throat> when she puts her arms out to close the window, she looks into the trees, and there is, like, Ninja Zombie, <laughs> who throws, like, a bolt, like yeah. an old, a old-fashioned bolt, into her hand. It's just really her. cool. <clears throat> and then, below, the the zombies take a comedically oversized scythe, reach up to the top, like, floor, bring it down, and, and it slices it. through her neck like butter. It Literally, they're just like... When it's we saw cool the interview, scene, he's like, there's a slow decapitation scene. But it's not slow, they just do this. <laughs> it, it's a cool scene. I mean, like... <clears throat> it's like if I got, a, like, a brick of cheddar and was like... Shoo. But it's zombies. I'm like, you're seeing zombies actually working it's together. It's hilarious. <clears throat> it's almost like a hive mind at that point. It's like, to get the food. It's and hilarious, because the next scene is followed up with you seeing all of the zombies going to the tool shed, like, in a line, yeah. and then coming out with weapons. That's where I get... That's where I gotta put in, again, after watching it, and, like, saying, it's almost, again, like a hive mentality type mind. That they yeah. don't really have, like, serious like cognitive thinking but they seem to be able to like work together like you know like bees do in a hive to get like uh to get what they need <clears throat> but it's like so com- like <laughs> it's cool <laughs> uh, each one's with a different weapon they got a hole yeah, like, and they start <laughs> trying to axe. chop down the wall like the door it's actually that is cool you gotta but, do that but props for that <clears throat> eh, it's kind of funny especially with the years scene before that, land of the dead guys and day of the dead um they take, like, a rifle, and they, like, kill a bunch. Like, they pop their paper mache, like, pinata heads. Yeah, it's kind of like the Ving Rhames scene in Dawn of the Dead, in the remake Dawn of the Dead. Yeah. That's the, except they don't, like, name him or anything like that. They just, like, start shooting him until he runs into bullets and kind of freaks out. Yeah. But then mm-hmm. they all, like, retreat anyways, because it's, you know, plan isn't working. Just Yeah, the zombies don't retreat just because they're getting... The, they retreat because they're getting hurt, and because... They need to rethink their plan. Basically. Which is hilarious. <laughs> yes, like... It's a war of attrition here with the zombies. Um, someone no. finds the maid's body and throws her out to be eaten by zombies to distract them. See, that I like to see more of in zombie films. So zombies, I can kind of think of it. That'd be kind of cool. Eh, maybe. <clears throat> um, then some zombies are able to climb up in through a window that was accidentally left open. Yeah, he actually kind of <clears throat> climbs up there. Uh... And he kind of try, tries to fault she fault she. <laughs> yeah, he but someone gets killed work. with a thing through their eye, the, uh, and left in a washroom somehow. Leslie, Leslie, Leslie. Oh, she's yeah. left. Oh, she's wait. She's left in the hall. She just goes in the washroom. Yeah, basically they they try to do like it goes like it's going to do the uh, the eye scene like from Zombie Flesh Eaters, 
but instead it goes to the side like that. Yeah. It's like, you know, screw that, Fulci. Anybody can do the eye team. Let's do this scene. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but it's not very good. <laughs> it's not, actually. Uh, and Bear Trap Woman is essentially useless again. Well, as, she, she's rarely useless. Yeah, she, as she, like, as the other guys fight off, uh, fight off the, the zombies. And and Michael stands around. Like, Michael stands around going, Oh, mama, what? And, uh, she, uh, Mama Evelyn, uh, takes a machete and, like, hacks up some zombies. Yeah, there's some pretty good zombie action at this point. Like, there's, yeah. the, there's a good fight sequence there. They finish off the zombies, and Evelyn and, and Michael go downstairs. And she's like, oh, let me comfort you, Michael. Oh, it's so she sad, you almost got hurt. And she kisses both his cheeks like they do in the attack. Yeah. And then, and, and she then she's a like, kiss on the lips. And then he like, okay. kisses her again, and he keeps going, oh, mama. And then he, like, puts his, puts hand. his hand directly into her shirt and grabs her breast. And she's just kind of like, yeah, okay. And then he, like, immediately, like, puts his hand down and, like, starts putting his hand up her skirt. And, and he's like, oh, this is, I want to be close like we used to be, Mama. I want to feel you so close. Puts pretty much gets, in her, like... In, in her panties. Yeah, he's pretty much got a hand in her panties. And this is where she's like, <laughs> wait a minute. And she pushes him away and slaps him. And then he, he runs away and he's like, I'm your son. Why not let me... T- Why would you not let me? And he runs Cause away. Because you're and her son, dude. Because you're her son. What's with incest with this guy? Yeah, we apparently found out that every single one of his films has something to do with This is why I said that this like is my a, last of his films. It's just a garbled mess of incest and just like odd. It's like the Italian VC Andrews. <laughs> yeah. And um, basically, he goes off and he sees Leslie and he's like, Leslie, are you hurt? Uh, should I call anyone? Should I call anyone? And she's clearly a zombie. <laughs> yeah. And it cuts away to everyone like making a plan to leave. And I high five myself because I, as you know, I hated Michael right from the beginning yeah. of the film. Um, and and she's like, I'm going to go get Michael now. I just left him alone for the last 20 minutes. And then she goes down and she finds that Michael is dead with his arm ripped off. And Leslie's, uh, eating, and Leslie's his eating his arm. So she, kill, she kills Leslie Zombie by kind of like banging her head. head against, she bangs her head against the back of the uh, But of the like bathtub. it's weirdly done because it's only her, the back of her neck is hitting the... It's just well, an odd scene. <clears throat> but, but she's dead, and now she's in shock. And this is where I have my, one of my first problems with the film. One of your first problems with the film <laughs> yes. is this. Yes. Michael, Michael is a pain in the ass. Yeah. We should have seen Michael's death very corely done. Yeah. I wanted to see Michael die. I really, really, really wanted to see Michael's death. Like, close up. I want to see gut munching for Michael. <laughs> Maybe his face being ripped off. His eyes. I want to see his eyes being torn out. Because Michael's got these poppy... Like really creepy eyes, and it's like, and you want to, you want to, like, you really want to see him go. I did. I hated him. Yeah, Michael, yeah, I hated you, dude. In the movie, <laughs> it's not your fault. You're probably a fantastic person in real life and a great actor, but screw it. I didn't like you. You you freaked me out right from the beginning, and there was some great nudity at the beginning, and you had to ruin that great nudity by being in your bed and just coming out and stuff like that. I don't. That was great, dude. Anyways, progressing, progressing the plot. After they <laughs> learn that, like. Uh, what's his face is like dead, uh, and the mustachioed man comes in to find out that his girlfriend Leslie, who he just hasn't checked on in like an hour or so, I guess. Yeah, he's like is uh, dead. He's like, oh man. Evelyn is like, no. She's in shock. So they come up with a plan to let the zombies in. Because the zombies uh, are slow. They said the zombies are slow, so we can get past them. They'll we'll just like. We'll use the house to our advantage. They can come in the house, and we can like leave the house. And they can just maybe there's something in the house they're looking for. Oh, we'll just go on, and the zombies can like chill in the house. Uh, at this point, the zombies have come back with a battering ram <laughs> and started like smacking it. Now this one, that's awesome. And I was like, mm. <laughs> where did that come from? <laughs> you have no idea. They just suddenly had a battering ram, and they were like smacking it. So they're like, yeah, they're gonna get in eventually. We better just let them in. So they go downstairs. They let them in. They run upstairs. Uh, everything gets, like, whatever. They find Evelyn again, who's in shock. Uh, I forgot. This happened all before the Evelyn thingy. Um, they bring her downstairs. They're like, we're just gonna go now. 
But before they can go, um, the the butler guy run like he's like he's about to run out, and then suddenly from out of a door pops like zombie Grizzly Adams from earlier. Why didn't he eat that dude? He's a big dude. I think zombies are hungry, stuff like that. This is a big guy. Why didn't yeah. he eat this guy? I don't know. The zombies in this are weird. Uh, so he's just there like a zombie, and he's like, "Oh, master, what are you doing here? We gotta get out of here. Zombies are everywhere!" Oh, and he gets eaten. And they hear him scream, so they run back in, and they look, and they see him getting eaten yeah, see with the professor the zombie. Effects, and, like, he looks up, and he's like, so... And he, and they're like, oh, this is pretty sad. Let's just get out of here. So instead of running to their cars, like they should do, because they've all got cars there... They <laughs> run down the road. They run down the road and go to a weird shack a place. Shack. And they go to sleep. Uh, because, you know, that's what you should do when zombies are around. You little bit tuckered out <clears throat> and go to sleep. So at this point, there's four of them left. Um, they wake up. Uh, they run further down the road because, you know, they had to go into their cars. Let's just keep going further down this rabbit hole. So we got Screamy Blonde Girl, Evelyn the Voluptuous Mom. Mustachio guy. Okay. Uh, we got uh, Italian Tom Atkins. <laughs> and we got uh, Mark. So they... Run, they find a monastery, when they, and they see a monk going in. This, kind, this is one of my favorite. This is my other favorite sequence coming up. Yeah, um, this was this is where we kind of realized, oh, rogues. Yeah. Um. So they go in. So he repeatedly follows this one monk who's not talking to him at all, which you know that's probably why it's a decision. While zombies are around, they go in. <laughs> well, to be fair, though, the like, monks have had the silence and stuff. So. Okay, and the mustachioed people, the mustachioed man runs in. He's like, you watch the girls. I'm going to run in and check on it. And he runs in and he checks. And uh, they're all like down in meditation. And he's like, oh, you're all doing a meditation. Sorry for interrupting you. The zombie stuff. And they all turn their heads and they're like, you mean like us? Well, they don't actually say anything, but they're zombies. Uh, and then they proceed to eat them. And then, because this seems to be a, like a trend with uh, <laughs> the awesome. characters in this film, he screams. Instead of, like, he starts screaming in horror, and instead of what you would do... Run away from the screaming. <laughs> they run all the way down, like, several sets of halls, in, look in the room, see that he's getting eaten, and they're like, oh, okay. And they close it and then run, run back. Like, the screaming, zombies are around. You've seen your friends getting munched on. If the guy's screaming, you get out of it. They're the most heroic people I've ever seen, though. Anytime anyone's yeah. screaming, unless they're, like, fully dead now, they're like, well, I guess he's fully dead. We gotta go. Um, Can't save him, though. Uh, so they run... Which is too bad. He was the best fighter in the whole film. Yeah. They run, and they find another shack filled with odd tower parts on wheels. Yeah. Be... No, it's not supposed to be on wheels, actually. Well, no, it's not <laughs> supposed to be, but... <laughs> It's They're obviously like floating around. Yeah. So they cover the door. Um. This is when my hated character comes back into the film. Well, first, well, they, the first they run upstairs and a zombie's there, and and he's like, "We've got to get out through the front door." And there's like 800 zombies, and they're like, "Oh my god, there's 800 zombies in the front door," and he's like, "Evelyn, blonde girl, move the thing out of the way so we can get out the front door." And I'm like, "You can take one zombie." As opposed to the 20 in front of the door. So nobody really... But he does decide can. to take on the zombie whilst they do that. Mark, as you remember, is the worst fighter in this film. He takes a big piece of board and he starts... Hitting his shoulder. Short, like, never going for the head or anything like that. He's just constantly like... Wax one shoulder, wax the other shoulder. No! I can't get you! What is the problem? <laughs> um, and he's not even able to hit his head. So he ends up throwing it over like... In a slow motion scene. <laughs> yeah, in a weird slow motion scene. So they're like, all right, now we can go up the stairs. So they run up the stairs, Evelyn in front. Uh, well, to be fair, they run up the stairs, Evelyn in front. Everyone's like, okay. And they stop as Michael wanders out. Uh, and uh, she's like, oh my god, Michael! And they're all like, isn't he a zombie? Pretty sure he's a zombie. <laughs> and she walks up and, and she's like, Michael, you came back to me and... Like, despite the fact that every other time they've been trying to help people, they're just like... He takes out her breasts. He takes out her breasts, and, and he's like... 
And she's like, yes, I know you want to suckle from it. It's okay. Like it's you, good. And, like, they're, like they're literally just standing in the background like... <laughs> and yeah. then she's, he starts suckling from her teeth. And they're still, like... And then he, like... <laughs> so are we. Oh, the yeah, it's funny. Then he proceeds, because he is a zombie, obviously, to, to bite, bite her nipple off. Oh, and, like, ooh, it's it's like a good chunk, too. Oh, um, I hate when you do that. So and she fun. dies. And then they're like, oh, no, maybe we should have said something. This entire ordeal. I don't think they could have said anything. Yeah, <laughs> when she gives her breast to her 10-year-old son, it's, it's a... Yeah, it's sort of a... <laughs> then zombies proceed to, like, pop in everywhere. And they pick him up. And they turn the bandsaw on. And they're about to force him into a bandsaw. And they're about to eat the other girl. And then it just ends. And that's it. Yeah, zombies pretty win. much. The zombies, the zombies win this one. So, here we go. Thoughts on the film? Uh... I just had to check because there was a marching band outside earlier. Um, it was bad, and I didn't <laughs> like it. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, it was funny in some respects. See, I but think... But, like, oh, my... It's just... That a lot of, like, Andre Bianche is not a great filmmaker by any stretch of the imagination. But it was fun. The zombies were it's fun. It fun. There's, there's a, a bunch of WTF moments, definitely, within the film. Uh, the nudity is good. Uh, Expectation here comes back. <laughs> the yeah. nudity in the film is good. The, there's actually some decent like zombie gut munching sequences. Uh, the zombies are at least not boring. I mean, I'm really tired of watching zombies just trudge along. So it was kind of refreshing. Well, these ones aren't even trudging, which is also kind of funny. Well, they do stuff. They I do mean, slow walk. They do stuff. I they mean, slow walk everywhere, slow but walk. also they've got like weapons from time to yeah. time. It's hilarious. I found that hilarious, especially when they get, have a battering ram. And I'll be honest, the movie went fast. It was like 85 minutes. I was seeing like it was over. Well, it's because no everything time. is happening all the time. There's yeah. no like slow moments of like, like you're not bored what's in this happening time. or like people getting picked off one by one. It's consistent. Uh, like it's very consistent. Like they're there. Zombies are there now. Obviously, this guy knows expectation. Yeah. And some people have thought over the years that some of this was on purpose. It was satirical. Uh, and that that's what he was trying to do, was actually to just put in the parts that people, in the kind of like, this is what you want, this is what you're going to get type of thing. Yeah. That's never been like, ever said for sure that that's what he, but that was just theories that yeah. people have had about the director. I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, I think that probably, I think he is, an, is obviously an exploitation director. Yeah. And, it delivers. A burial ground delivers. As a zombie film, do we get zombies in this movie? Yeah. Do we get death? Do we get like murders? Do we get like fights and, and people getting killed and cheesiness? And do we get the nudity? Do we get the, you know, the crazy Italian things that make no sense and the creepy kids? Everything that you see in every other zombie film that in Italy is here. Uh, you know, you, you want the creepy looking kid from an Ar Argento film? It's in this movie. You want. You want the you know the voluptuous Italian like n girls be go going naked? That's in this movie. You want scenes that make absolutely no sense at all. And, but there are some cool things. We're there's we're showing these zombies in robes, and we're like, okay, well maybe that's like the burial outfits that they wore at the time. But the zombies, see, at the beginning of the film, he reads out this ancient like text, and we're we're never really sure that. Actually, we're not sure about that until we actually watch the interview after. Like, yeah, oh, that's what it is. <clears throat> you know, like awaken zombies or something. Yeah, something? yeah, exactly. Pretty much. Yeah. He does. He eats. He reads this thing and and awakens zombies of this uh, nearby like like long like past monastery it used to be, I guess, uh, which is cool. So we we know where these zombies come from, and uh, for some weird reason, you don't always attack or they'll go by, and you kind of feel like there's maybe there's more that they're trying to do than actually just kill these people they do make a brief reference to possibly them wanting something in the house yeah but we never find out anything about that it's no. like certain things are dropped in there and just drop right out again uh the movie itself is fun i mean like it's a fun movie i can't it's a bad it's a bad movie well yeah compared to like some but 
honestly, if you're watching a movie like The Room or something like that, it's it's not. It's not the Room has some boring sequences within the, within the film that it is. Yeah. It's a fun film to watch. I own it. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> this one isn't boring. There's no boring parts in, in Barrow Ground. Yeah. Uh, there's always something going on. I will say, though, that, like, we watched three movies last night. And, like, <laughs> this was the one that I was, like, immediately afterwards, I, can't, I completely forgot we watched. I was like, yeah, because the other two movies are my type of movies. Yeah. And uh, this one was like, man, oh, man. Um, <laughs> it had some funny sequences, but, like. Well, we watched, we specifically watched this one for this podcast today. Yeah. Obviously, when we do Spot Our Theater, we like, we like to have the WTF movies to talk about with you guys here. Like, stuff that you guys may have seen or may not have seen. I'm kind of curious about it. No, 88 Films' presentation of the of it was really good. Yeah. Uh, the movie the movie looked good. Uh, the uh, the sound was good. Yeah. And uh, the the special features were, were really good on there. So, and the, and the cover and everything's really cool. There's actually... Like the other cover, which a, a man, but I do like the new cover that 80 Films did for uh, Barrowground. So check that out. That's yeah. it. Just definitely watch it. I'd say yeah, you could probably have fun, fun with like, it. I haven't like watch like Zombie Flesh here is really uh, well, I find it's really cool. Yeah, like it's snacks, really cool. watch it with a friend. Yeah, watch a couple of like Italian zombie movies. Make that one of them. If you get Zombie Flesh Eaters, get Barrowground, get some movies like that, mm-hmm. uh, and you'll have fun with those movies there. So there we go. Zombie Flesh Eaters, fun, uh, flawed, yeah. flawed fun. So you have any, you want to give like a score or something like that? No. How to score with Spotter Theater one? Because these are never movies that are meant to be like really great movies. These are movies yeah. that are meant to be WTFs. Yeah, no. Nah. We don't need a score for this like segment. Uh, so we'll be back in a minute. We're going to be talking about some Jalos. Yeah. Uh, two sp- and specifically. And you know what? Uh, let's just say the quality level is very, very different. Very, the, very different. On the two that we're going to talk about. So last night we had a whole movie night. We watched three movies in a row. It was really fantastic. And the next two movies we watched, unlike Bear Ground, uh, with no spot or with, with this fact and that it, it, they were fantastic films. Yeah. Uh, we watched Lucio Fulci's... Oh, shit. Uh, I you were going to finish your sentence. Uh, no, I was going to say the name. Uh, Lizard and the Woman's Skin. Yeah, from Mondo Macabre. Uh, great disc. Lots of features on there, by the way. I did check out some features before. And we watched the uh, 88, was it 88 films release? Oh, uh, sure. I think so. What was it? No, no. Yeah, no, it was a Shameless. Shameless, that one Shameless, a few Blu-rays. And it's uh, Four Flies in Grey Velvet by uh, Dario Argento. It's the third in the Animal Trilogy. So, which one do you want to talk about first? I guess we should probably talk about them in order. Yeah. Well, they don't know which order we watch them, so it wouldn't matter. Well, that's true. <laughs> but, uh, okay, Lizard's and Woman's Skin starts off with a Lucha Fulci film. Uh, this is an early Fulci film. This is before he got really into horror. So this is, is only his second Jalo. He's he made one before called Don't Torture Duckling. Matt hasn't seen that yet. I really want to watch that with Matthew because it is a high quality Jalo like the one we watched. Uh, okay. I'm not sure if it's as going to be the, as hard to guess as the one we watched. So Lizard Woman Skins has a really clever uh, concept. We're introduced right away to I think it's Friend of the Balkan. Uh, I think I'm pretty sure it's from the Balkan. Uh, let me make sure I get her name here. I'm totally not cheating, guys. I'm looking at IMDb. Uh, <coughs> but uh, talk about it. I might find the name. Um. Okay. So the main girl, I believe her name's Carol. Is it Carol? Yeah, it's from from the Balkan. Yeah, that's the name. Um. Uh, Carol is a a girl who suffers from. Uh, constant recurring nightmares about uh, about her neighbor next door, who she's never actually met, uh, uh, particularly sleeping with her neighbor next door. This like free, like open, loving, like mysterious girl who lives next door, who she's never actually met. Julie. Uh, yes. Uh, she like she has these dreams like frequently, almost every night. Uh, and she, like, her dreams progress to the point where she, she has a dream of her getting in bed again with, uh, with, uh, with the girl, but this time killing her, 
with uh, with her like letter knife, uh, as well as like a mysterious image of two like like strange hippies as she describes them sitting on this like rafter thing. Um, she then finds out later that week that uh, the girl actually has been murdered in a way mimicking her dream. And uh, she starts to wonder if she's done it. Uh, she's got like notes, like she's like she's realizing that the the hippies were in fact real as well. And she starts to like go further, like down as she finds out uh, little things. Right. And we start to find out that she actually wrote down notes about her dreams. So well, she was showed at the beginning of the film. Actually. Well, yeah, we see that, but like. Uh, anyone could have accessed the notes and replicated the murder. Now, um, I, I gotta jump in for a minute, because I got, I looked at, I'm looking at the cast here, yeah. and I think this really, like, has to be said, it has an amazing cast, It's uh, especially for Jello films, that really works for it. Aside for a friend of Balkan, uh, we have Jean, Jean, Jean Sorel playing the, uh, her husband. Yeah. Uh, Stanley Baker does an amazing job as the, uh, as the inspector. Yeah. Uh, and we also have uh, the doc the doctor is done, them, but the main oh, the girl um, Anita Strindberg she plays uh, she plays her neighbor and both Florinda and Anita have like this kind of like angular like but they're very sexy like very attractive women one of them I find a little skinny like to the ribs like, yeah. too much but uh, both are very attractive and there's exploitation Aaron has to say the beginning of this film it's a ton of nudity uh, yeah. This movie will have a bunch of that anyway. Uh, it's an it's yellow and kind of, but it doesn't seem exploitive. No, it's, it's really done towards the story. It fits the story. Yeah, and, and it's very important, naturally. Very important and, and great. For um, as uh, as we progress, we find out that everyone has motives <clears throat> to have done it. Um, yeah, the husband's been cheating on his wife for two years. Yeah, uh, and it's proposed that he could have been being blackmailed because of a mysterious phone call received uh, just before uh, the girl's death. Um, the father, like, the, the husband's daughter uh, knows the hippies and could easily have set it up. Yeah. As we actually see earlier on in the film when she, like, sees one of the other, like, <laughs> not the two hippie people, but, like, another one of the people in their, like, acting trope. Uh... She sees one of them, and they know her. And we get more into that. Also, it's very possible that the 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 red-haired hippie called Redhead, or I think he's called Red Hair, yeah, uh, is mysterious and violent, and could be very well linked more directly to the killings. Yeah, these are the hippies are actually are heroin addicts as well. That's actually pretty blatantly yeah. put through in the film. Yeah, they're. They're really like. So these aren't your peace-loving hippies, like totally. The girl seems. No. Seems um, good. there's, there's a lot to, and the the film leaves you like wondering, who could like one who did this and why, and two, who like, who had access to those notes, who could have replicated, the, uh, the murder like, mowed pretty much everyone in her house and just cut a few people in her house. Yeah, they make a big deal over the fact that she wrote down her dreams, yeah. and uh, and kind of like uh, on, on these little notes, like a dream journal type thing, because she's going to a psychiatrist. Even the psychiatrist is made to look very suspicious. Yeah. And and the father, who that is an amazing job. I can't remember his name, uh, but oh, God, he was so good. What's the father's name again? I don't know, but he he was the one who like had the pipe earlier, and he's like, hmm, Hammond. His name is something Hammond. Uh, I wonder. It's Joan Hammond. Uh, Joan's the girl, right? Yes. Okay. But uh, he's really, really good. Uh, damn it, I can't find him here now. He's really good. So Frank Hammond's the the husband. Yeah. Joan is the daughter. Joan's the so it's daughter. Not Hammond. It's uh, Hammond is the the husband and his daughter. I wonder if it's uh. Try picking. You, by the way, is red is red hair. Okay. Try picking the name that matches the last name of the main character. There's not. She's oh, no, last Hammond last name, so. Oh yeah, because she's married. Um, Ed Edmund Brighton. Possibly. Look. Yeah, I think 
that's him. Yeah, Leo, okay. that's uh, Leo Leo Gen, who's a you know a famous uh, famous actor in like a lot of uh, a lot of British films, and he and, like Moby Dick and stuff like that. Uh, but oh, man, he's really good. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of like when you when we watch Tanner Bear, like oh man, that guy in Tanner Bear would make a great like detective in a lot of films. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know what happens there. And and this guy here again has that kind of feel to him of like he'd be a great detective. And here's the really cool thing: the detectives in this movie aren't stupid. No. In a lot of these films, the detectives are kind of bumbling and stuff. Not in this movie here. They're actually really, really well done out. And the detective is the person. The inspector does figure it out. Oh, yeah. And it's let on early on that he knows who did it. But he doesn't, like, let us on. Let, let, let us know who did it. And there's so many good red herrings through this film. There really is. Um, it's so well acted, too. Yeah. I don't know if we should reveal the ending. I don't, I don't think so, do you? No. I mean, this isn't part of our spoiler theater, so... No, and it's well shot. I mean, there's a scene there uh, where the, tel the telephone is where the calls like come from, like the the uh, the blackmail calls come from. And there's a scene where kind of like she's... where there's one of the one of the actors is kind of is by the telephone. And even though it's kind of farther off, it's shot in a way that the telephone is kind of right next to them. You remember that scene? Yeah. Then it kind of goes out. It's a, it's really well shot. This is this film is extremely well shot. It is gorgeous. There's even a sequence like, and you saw this because I, I'd seen the sequence before in clip films, but you'd seen you saw it in the context of the film because I was going to the washroom, uh, with the dog scene, the infamous dog scene. Yeah, <laughs> it was pretty. There's some lot. There's a lot of uh, very messed up dream sequences that are important. Yeah, and, that, and that's the thing. They are so. It is so cool the way they do those. So, yeah. without spoiling it, because this is one guys. I, I'm going to say, I'll give my recommendation, I'll buy it. Yeah. This is not one like just to watch or something. This is something that you will watch over again. It's a really good film. Yeah. Mondo Macabre has put out an amazing uh, Blu-ray of it. You should really check the features when you hear some time. Yeah. Um, and it's, uh, they just do some great, great stuff. Uh, strongly Holly. It gets definitely gets like the high, a highest recommendation when it comes to gels. It is a very, very good gel. It's a very good action chase scene. Yeah, there was a really good action chase scene, scene which in this film. Lucio Fulci, as much as he gets crap for like a lot of the, the stuff that he would do later on, stuff like that, he makes some really, really great films. Uh, the you know the Gates Hell trilogy, fun the zombie flesh eater. Yeah. Uh, don't torture Duckman, which you really, really do have. It's mm. another good one like that. And um, this one, and this one here, which some people consider one of the greatest Diablos ever made, and I can see why that it is so well done, and it did leave us guessing. Uh, yeah. To who the killer was, uh, there was there was definitely like near the end where like every when everything was like coming together where I was like, oh, okay, and you never feel like a cheat you. No, because there kind of are the clues there, and when they come together, you're like, okay, yeah. Your thoughts? Uh, I thought it was it was awesome. Uh, this is my favorite type of movie, so. Uh, it's it was good to watch, especially after having seen Burial Ground. <laughs> uh, it was it was really uh, it was really fun, and I love the mystery, and definitely had me guessing like all, all over the place. There's people who I was like, "That's it, this makes sense," because like they like had like the the motive and this stuff, and then, and then they die. Yeah, and then they die, and you're like. Oh, okay, no, even though that would have been an interesting twist, it's actually more interesting than that. Uh, so, yeah, definitely watch the movie, probably have the movie. It's the worst, it's an honor. Would you buy it? I'd buy it, yeah. yeah. I like Jalous. That's definitely one, though. Good Jalous. Uh, what, what, I was just saying, Strip New Fear Killer may not be the um, greatest I quality of like, Jalous. I don't have the highest hopes for it. Um. <laughs> Uh, the second one we watched was uh, Dario Gento's Four Flies of Grey Velvet. For years, Four Flies of Grey Velvet was a was kind of the last yell, the, the Dario Gento film that you couldn't see. Uh, in order to see it, you'd usually you'd send away for a uh, bootleg VHS of variable, questionable quality. Yeah. Uh, finally, Shameless put it out, and uh, they put it out on DVD and Blu-ray. I have the Blu-ray of it, and we got to watch that last night. I was really tired during watching this so you saw a lot more of this than I did so yeah. obviously you're going to completely take over this review pretty much and I'll just chime in with my two cents every here and there uh, yeah okay um, 
there's a uh, the film is about a, a musician, a drummer, yeah, in a decently popular, I'm assuming, rock band. Yeah, played by Michael Brandon, right? Uh, yes, who's uh, who's hounded for over a week. Not really hounded, but like for over a week, he can see clearly someone following him. Uh, someone has like watching his every move, and he's pretty much for like over a week been with him everywhere. Uh, so finally, after like a week's up, and uh, he's getting like really frustrated, he follows the man himself to an abandoned theater. Uh, when he confronts the man, the man pulls a knife on him, uh, and he, in defense, like, turns the knife back on the man uh, in a struggle and accidentally stabs him, killing him, and, like, dropping him over a, like, a big, like, ditch area between the stage and the, the general, like, rest of the area. Up above, a living nightmare is, watch <laughs> is watching him. In the most horrifying mask I've ever seen. Um, we should say right here before we go any further that w when the movie was, came on, uh, there's a quote, a quote from Lucio Cosi. Uh, Lucio Cosi is a Italian director himself and actually worked for Argento for his Profondo Rosso store. Okay. Uh, but also, uh, fun fact, is uh, uncredited as the uh, as pretty much the stunt guy that's behind that mask. Oh, okay. As saying that, that was Argento. A big move. <laughs> he was like he wanted this to be seen in pitch darkness so. which we did we turned off all the lights yeah, we turned off all the lights and watched um, it and it is effective <laughs> it's horrifying um, the mask is literal horror uh, and but that horrifying savage beast uh, takes pictures of uh, of the murder and then leaves and then goes on to start threatening uh, threatening uh, the main guy yeah, he's like he's at a his friend. His friends like kind of like a yeah. He's at this band like like a get together. Or something yeah, he's like. at a get together <laughs> at his house, and uh, he he like looks through his records and he finds a pe like a photo of oh, of the murder. Yeah, <laughs> um, and he sees in the newspaper afterwards that uh, that the person has been murdered. The living maid kind of like yeah. notices it too. Yeah, the yeah, living maid. maid notices. And she seems to figure it out, but early on she gets. No, he lives with his girlfriend, played by Mimsy Farmer, who's actually the that's his wife. Stuff. His wife. That's yeah, his wife. And she's really, she's cute. I like Mimsy Farmer. She's yeah. got like the short, like pixie haircut. Uh, and when she out. finds out about things, because he tells her pretty early on, she's pretty distressed by it. However, he decides to go about things his own way, and goes to I guess an old friend of his. Uh, this is where they introduce the best group of characters like period I want to see more movies about these guys uh, in fact like you said how um, you like like the guy from Tenebrae you're like man I could see more movies about this guy yeah and uh, the guy from the last movie and the guy from the last movie you're like oh man I could see more movies about this guy for me the entire supporting like group he goes and he meets with his friend God. His real name is Godfrey, but like he refers to him as God. I know he's called Diamodi Dionis. Huh? That's him, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He yeah, actually, that's what his Italian. That's what his Italian, Italian name is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the Italian version of it is Diamodi Dio, okay. but uh, when it's the double version is Godfrey. Yeah. It's Bud Spencer actually. Bud Spencer is a very famous actor over in Italy. He's he's really famous for a lot of like westerns, like comedic westerns they did. These uh, my name is nobody, uh, you know they call me, uh, you know the trendy films yeah. that that were done with Terrence Hill. He, they were kind of a team that worked together, kind of like a uh, Abbott Costello type of like uh, kind of comedic western team. And he did a lot of that stuff. He does a really okay. good job now. Uh, <clears throat> God, he, he's introduced to God Godfrey, <laughs> and God free, I guess to call him so this doesn't get confusing and weird. Uh, Godfrey tells him that he'll help him out by looking into things on the street. Uh, he'll also send with him another fun, like, oddball character professor, a guy who lives outside, like, sleeping in his hammock, uh, to, uh, to go watch over the house at night. 
uh, which he does. And he also suggests that he go uh, find a private detective, uh, Rocio, who is, like, sort of eccentric and, like, odd himself. But as we, as we meet him, he's this, like, like, rather flamboyantly gay, but, like, and, like, goofy, like, he tells uh, the main guy, I, like, he's like, man, you know, this is gonna be great, because I've been, I have, like, the best training you could imagine. I have so much, like, equipment to, like, find out anything. Like, I can do anything that modern science can do, but I haven't solved one case in the three years I've been a detective. <laughs> and he's like, and the guns not famous one, after. and he's like, mm -hmm. yep. 84 consecutive, like, <laughs> failures. He's like, this, like, he's like, you know what this means? That I have to solve this case. Because there's no way an impressive loss streak like that can go on. I could sit in my office and just wait, and the killer would come in and introduce himself. <laughs> because there's no way it could go on any further. The guy was in the Da Vinci Code, actually. Was he? Uh, Tom Hanks film, yeah. <clears throat> uh, he's, he's really fun, and he's a really cool character. And so, like, Godfrey and, uh, and Professor are all really cool characters, which is nice. So we've got, like, a good supporting cast. We've got... Uh, they're all, like, surprisingly... One of the better, actually, supporting cast in, in a group yeah. of them. Although this entire group feels... It really does feel like a book translated to film like a good mystery novel because of how like fleshed out and cool these like supporting characters are it's also got like a decent deal of humor but like not like out of place humor like good humor like professor is funny uh character there's humor. yeah there's uh <laughs> he has a mailman that earlier on he like <laughs> he thinks it's the guy yeah, I mean, uh, like because the guy come, he comes in the hood and he like goes to drop him. off the mail because it's raining and he tackles him and he starts beating him and like choking him. And he's like, "What do you want?" And he, like he he sees it's the the mailman and he's like, "You got a special delivery!" And he gets up and he's like, "Oh my god, I'm so sorry!" And he tries to wipe off his jacket and he's like, "You tried to mug me, <laughs> you you were strangling me and you tried to murder me. Why does everybody hate mailmen?" <laughs> that was a good sequence, actually. And then we see him several other times throughout the film. Uh, once more when Professor and him are, like, talking outside the house and he arrives to deliver something and he pulls out a baton. And he's like, I'm, I've got defenses this time. And later on when uh, things have gotten pretty hairy and his wife has decided to, like, leave for the countryside while he, like, stays to investigate. And the guy bikes up and he's like, you know what, I just quit! And he just turns around and leaves. Yeah. Um, Characters develop over this film. So it's really cool. It's really nice. Um, we've got... Definitely some very suspicious characters. Oh, yeah. Um, some characters are just, like, suspicious simply through, like... One of the things that, that like, is interesting about this one, uh, that I don't know how it compares to the, to the one we just talked about, is that uh, in the one we just talked about, everyone is given a clear motive, pretty much. Yeah. And you're like, oh, snap. With this one, they don't... They almost don't... They don't need to establish a motive because it's just... The way some people act and the way some people look, it's innocent yet, like, menacing enough that sometimes I was just like, hmm, they just don't sit right with me. There's characters that just don't sit right with me. There's, uh, there's a lot of, like, decent red herrings that I enjoyed. Uh, Did you guess the killer in this one? I suspected who the killer was. Without well, giving it away. Or, uh, around the maybe halfway point when they introduce uh, Arosia, because he starts to, like, he figures it out himself, too. Like, he starts to, like, see connections, and you can hear him, like, like, he doesn't reveal it, but he starts to comment on connections between things, and I'm like, oh, okay. That would make sense. Uh, but, uh, it's really fun. It's a good one. Um, the reveal is really good. The reveal is amazing in that one, actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, the added in footage, the extra footage that we, like, got, wasn't... Yeah, it wasn't a lot, really. It wasn't really... Like, the added... I, I appreciate the fact that they did it. It's just, like, but really, it's just, like, some footage, and it's, like, there was lower like, quality there's footage. There's, like, one course. of, like, him looking out over a lake. Yeah. There's one... There's two of single lines of dialogue that help 
contextualize certain things. Which is actually important. Yeah, well, like, for example, the character of, uh... Melissa, or not... This, like, dark-haired girl that comes to live with them midway through, the, like, a little ways into the film. Oh, the cousin. The cousin, yeah. They don't explain fully that she's the cousin in the, in the non-new dialogue. They bring it up later that they're related. Uh, like, way later. Uh, but if you have the extra scene on, uh, she says, my cousin's coming to stay for a while because of this reason. Yeah. So it... Like, and he doesn't want her to stay, right? He's like, you know... No, no, he's like, I... He's like, considering everything that's going on, I really don't think this is the brightest idea, but okay. Um, so there's... There's more to it. Mm. I feel like there's actually, like... Without revealing anything, I feel there's actually more to the plot than even the movie says because there's certain scenes that imply that there's more stuff going on. It starts out pretty fast. Now, if I had to give one criticism towards this film, and I really did like this film, is that I, I don't think that the the lead character was given an, was given enough likability at the beginning of the film to say, okay, you know, well, later on. Yeah. But at the beginning, it's like well, like he it just seems like kind of a dickish rat musician. Well, he yeah. is kind of a dickish musician. Mm -hmm. Like, there is, like, the, the cousin that comes to stay with him. Like, the moment his wife leaves, uh, he tells her to go, and then she's like, she's like, no, you're gonna have a hot bath first. And then he, like, like, despite being, like, grim recently, he, like, kind of, like, tricks her into the bath. <laughs> and, like, they have sex, and he's like, yeah, whatever. Oh, well, he's a musician. He's a musician. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. Um... But, um, he's got, like, this dickish quality to him, but, like, he's still, like, a likable dick. Yeah, you don't want to see him get... No, you don't want to see him get killed, definitely. And his friends, especially. I can believe that he has these friends, too. Like, I can... Yeah. You can tell, because he's such this dickish character, and he's not this, like, upstanding, like... Like, he's not, like, uh, the guy from Deep Red, where, like, his most dickish friend is, like that other musician that he knows. Yeah. Uh, uh, you mean the guy the, the struggling drunk? with homosexuality type? Yeah, the struggling yeah. homosexual who, like, has, like, who's, who's also a drunk. Yeah. Uh, that's, like, the darkest friend he had. But when this guy, this drummer guy, like, is intro like, introduced to, like, when he goes to find Godfrey, uh, you can believe it, that he knows yeah. Godfrey and then he knows these oddball characters. Yeah, it fits. It fits with his character. <clears throat> Which is nice. And the cool thing, one of the cool things I like is that the killer is so menacing. Like, oh, more God, so than. The mask is horrifying. Yeah, and, and like, the idea, the entire premise of it is spooky. Because he has, like, he can't go to the police or anyone because he, uh. He, like, he murdered this guy. And the guy has pictures of it. Yeah. So he can't, he can't say, like, this guy's stalking me, this guy's been in my house. Because a guy can come and go in his house whenever he pleases, pretty much. And the reasoning behind it is actually so really, really good. Yeah. Um, so it's uh, it's a very uh, it's a very cool one. I would I would love to have seen the supporting characters in other films. Oh yeah. Because they're awesome. Uh, Professor and Godfrey are sweet. Orosio was like one of my favorite characters because he's this like bumbling like. They introduce him as, like, this super clearly gay detective. <laughs> uh, to the point where they, they do straight up, like, it's not like a, woo, like a, like, depiction of an Italian, like a silly, like, gay so man. So it's not he's, a character. No, like, he's, like, he's, he's painting his house, and he's like, hello. <laughs> uh, but, like, the moment he comes in, he's like, uh, he's like, I don't know, I thought I had, uh, uh, I thought I had, like, Orosio's, uh, like, detective agency, but I guess not. And he's like, it's like, you think that, like, I'm a fairy, that this, like, this simple fairy will jump up and scream, like, his bloody murder at the first sight of, like, a mouse. Like, I'm a man like you, I'm just a different sort of man. That's cool. And he, like, mentions, uh, it's like, have you ever had a homosexual experience? <laughs> and he's, like, he's this, like, lovable, like, like doofy, that. like, clearly, like like, very flamboyant guy, like, the, the second scene we see of him is, like, them eating at a bar, and he's like, oh, who's paying? Are you paying? 
and like he he's like uh, and he goes up to the cashier and he's like what did he have and he's like it's like three like pudding things a steak <laughs> like two sandwiches and a bottle of beer he's like i guess he wasn't hungry then and like he pays it off but like he's also adept like he earlier on like after he's introduced he's like he starts to like note things he goes through everything uh and not too far in he like goes and calls him and is like i have some theories and he starts to connect dots pretty well and it's really cool he's like both funny and quirky and adept and godfrey is probably like the breakout character of that if anyone i could see appearing in anything else would be godfrey but like there's a lot of really fun characters which is what drives the the film at and the tense like uh inability to stop this person yeah it's, 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 the thing is the character the killer is so intense and it's so and it's and it's so threatening that these characters actually provide that nice break without actually taking away from the flow of the film yeah uh earlier on in fact the killer uh ties something around uh oh, so I the guy's throat yeah. and he like holds him pretty much choking him and he's like he's like i could kill you now but i won't you can't go to the, like, you can't go to the detectives, you can't go to, like, the police, you can't go to anyone, uh, because they'll find out, like, what happened. You are all alone, and I'm gonna get you, but not now, slowly. And then he leaves, and it sets the tone of, like, yeah, you, you, like, you would get, and it does lead up to him getting, like, pretty paranoid. Yeah, as you as, would. As you would, exactly. Yeah. Um, and his house, in a way, is, as uh, as his like wife mentions, treated kind of like a prison. He's got, like, someone who can come any time that they want and could kill him any time that, that he wants. And he's just forced to do whatever he can to try and figure out who it is. Yeah, because his wife doesn't believe him at first, and then she sees the... Uh, yeah, she finds, like, something. Yeah. Uh, and she starts to, like, realize how like dark the situation is, and all she wants is for him to leave with her. Mm. Uh, so... It's a very good film. Won't gonna, we're not going to spoil the end, obviously. No, no it's a good, it's a, it has a good ending. Really, watch Four Fives and Grey Belt if you haven't seen it. Shameless has a great release of it. I strongly recommend that you pick that up. Uh, the Blu-ray, uh, DVD or Blu-ray, whichever you prefer. Uh, they only put out a few Blu-rays, so this is one of the, you know, when they're limited blues that mm -hmm. put out. And, of course, that's Yellow Case. It's really cool looking. Uh, so those are two fantastic jowls that we, uh, that, that we watched last night. And, of course, also Burial Ground. Yeah. <laughs> uh, last thoughts on that one there. So last thoughts on that one there. Um, you can like tell it's a Dario Argento film. Music, as always, is very prevalent and awesome. Yeah, Eno Morricone did music for this one. We, we discussed uh, even though like, it's the first time he did like rock was really used. In this one. Yeah, we discussed like when the film started how I like the fact that Dario Argento does films about usually protagonists that are some sort of musician or artist and art and creativity is heavily like a part of his uh, his films uh, recurring themes and images is another important thing in this film I'll say as well without really giving anything away yeah. there's, there's a recurring image that is obscure but important that you may notice around which is cool um, our channel plays fair at this movie yeah. Uh, and, you know, see if you can guess who it was. Before just let the us end. know if you've seen these movies and if you did guess them. Let us know if, even if, let us know if you've seen Bear Ground. We thought of that one as well. Mm, yeah, see if you <laughs> guess. Did you guess who was going to. How awful it was going to be? <laughs> who was going to live on Bear Ground? Who I... was going to get their nipple bitten off? <laughs> um, Mama. <laughs> terrible film. Oh, that's, that's fun. Nah. <laughs> We had two really good ones after though, so it was okay. Yeah, well, they were two great films. Uh, so this has been, I guess, our Giallo segment. Yeah. Uh, where we actually looked at two fantastic films by two fantastic directors that uh, I think everybody should have in their collection. Yeah. Uh, would you buy Four Fives and Grey Velvet? Oh yeah, absolutely. It's a buy. It's a definite buy. Uh, totally forgot what I was going to say. Yep. <laughs> So, I guess where we we have another segment, or are we, are we going to finish this one off for now, or? Um, 
Hmm. This is a new podcast, and we're so actually we're, still working on the whole uh, concept uh, behind this one right here. Uh, this has been our Italian edition so far of the well, Buck 19 special. Considering it's our Italian edition, and considering the fact that uh, we're going to do, because I mentioned before, like a franchise retrospective on Nightmare on Elm Street, yeah. it wouldn't fit with our Italian thing. That's the only Italian things we've done. This is more like a triple feature review slash podcast. Yeah. Um, and I've been sick. So, uh, so yeah, look forward to our upcoming podcast. We got, yeah. let's, talk, let's talk about what we're gonna, what, what's coming up. Uh, well, we are going to do um, that retrospective that I talked about. For Nightmare on Elm Street. For Nightmare on Elm Street. We're also going to do one for Friday 30. So. Yeah. If those go well, we'll probably move on to uh, some other things. Probably Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, one that I'm super dreading uh, is uh, Hellraiser. <laughs> May I believe in your children of the corn. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so, you got, um, if you want to see a children of the corn retrospective, don't, don't ask for we'll it. Ask in the comment section. I really just like children below. of the corn. Um, this and actually, Puppet Master, of course, which is my favorite course. series. Yeah, and he has a lot to say about Puppet Master. Me, yeah. with the new three 80 films, Blu rays, yeah. I'm very excited to to watch those, but those I'm not going to watch until, uh, until I'm with Matt. Yeah. Because uh, uh, that's kind of our thing. I can see us doing some other ones. Uh, it's kind of... We're going to do it. Sorry, I can't mention after sequences anymore. After that last thing. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. We'll, we'll do other, like, retrospectives. Uh, and other things. Uh, we'll probably... We're going to review more films. We've got a lot of films, so... We'll talk about different things on here. We're not going to be just doing film reviews. We'll talk about stuff we got. Certain times, collecting things. Yeah, we, you're just back or, from... You've, like, did your haul video, and you're just back from, like... England, so there's not really like a, you've been out of town, yeah. so there's really nothing to like talk about there because we haven't like done anything. I've been just watching the house for the last like. He's done a great job. He's watched the house and the cats here for the last, the last like, two months. Weeks now. So, uh, pretty much. So, last two weeks to a month. So, um, uh, I don't really have anything to say about anything. Power, Power Rangers trailer was good though. I'll say that. That was really good. It's a really good trailer. I'm excited. <clears throat> the film actually, I don't. It's like not at all what I expected it to be. It no, was so much more. It interested me without showing me any of the stuff that should have interested me. It had a Misfits feel to it. If yeah. you remember the TV series Misfits, uh, the British show. Not the, like overtly that. No, but it's like. But you got kind of a feel. Like but like the introduction of it as like troubled like students. Yeah, rather than like. Which makes sense as five teens with attitude. Because the the last. I mean, let's be honest. Yeah. The actual original Power Rangers did not have attitude. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> they were. Tommy had attitude. Tommy had more enough yeah, attitude he, for everybody. But he didn't come around until later. That's true. Um, I will say, uh, I was like mildly skeptical about like how Rita looked and everything uh, before we saw the trailer. Like she was the only thing that I was like, it's odd how much they've changed her. I kind of liked it, uh, but like obviously they couldn't do the like big. You know, yeah, but uh, so going total camp, then. yeah. But her introduction in the trailer yeah, is cool. like really badass, and it makes me fear for Rangers, which is weird. It's weird to like think of the because no, there hasn't really been a Ranger uh, who well, died legitimately. The pink one in that series, right? yeah, but she comes back at the end <coughs> in Lost Galaxy, she dies, but she's then resurrected <coughs> at the end, so there's no legitimately died and stayed dead ranger yeah um so her mentioning having one i love the fact that she mentions that they're rangers and not just like we've got suits we're some sort of ranger or something like she straight up says like i've killed rangers before yeah which is and cool it's menacing and cool so i'm excited about that uh there's a little addition to our thing there's the one thing we can talk about because i haven't watched anything else i haven't watched flash i haven't watched arrow i haven't watched anything yet uh there's a new show on about creepy passes oh. called channel zero i might check out the first episode of that soon uh because i'm not a huge fan of the candle cove uh creepy pasta but it, it would be interesting to see how that translates on the tv and not like you can never get enough horror series is, yeah, well, on I watched the so first couple episodes of Screen Queens. I'm still unsure. It's it does have the same feel as of the Cyclone, but it's one of those shows where I feel like I'm gonna have to watch the whole series kind of almost together before I actually really get a good feel for it. Yeah, I don't know. It's 
I was not impressed totally with the first episode of American Horror Story. It was okay. But... I've never been a huge American Horror Story fan, so I don't really keep up on it too much. Um, that's not my type of horror anyways. So, so you don't know the concept behind this one? Uh, I've heard it's split, in a, well, well, it's split into three seasons this time, technically. Is it really? Yeah, it's going to be like... Thank like, uh... It's going to be like a, a, a like a half, half, like half of it's going to be one concept. As in there's going to be a single episode, one story thing. Then it's going to go to another concept. Well, the first concept, to get this, it's a, there's like, you know, those, those haunt, haunting shows yeah. that come on like TV stuff where people talk about like being haunted and then you see like reenactments of it. Yeah. So this is what you get. Some actors are playing the people that are talking about the the yeah. hauntings that they went through yeah. and uh, other actors are playing the reenactment actors that are doing ha- reenactments of the haunting okay that's odd <laughs> it is uh, it'll, it, it'll it's still I'm, I've only seen the first episode so no maybe the concept gets better I do like the actors it's odd <coughs> it's gonna be interesting um, but yeah I think we're we're pretty much done here I don't can't think of anything else to talk about like currently uh, but on our next podcast, we'll probably definitely be longer than this one. Uh, <laughs> Let us know what some stuff that you'd like to see us do. Yeah. Obviously, we've done things where we talk about comic books, we talk about video games, we talk about we pretty much talk about everything within our podcast. We kind of basically geek chat. Yeah. Uh, I was hoping that within the next podcast, we'd be able to talk more about the Nintendo and X2 because I'm actually excited about probably that. Probably not. <laughs> but uh, what? But that did nothing came out yet. And you know, it's supposed to be out next March. Oh. Pretty much confirmed that it's going to be out next March. We don't have any. No new information. Anything. Anyway. Nothing that you can't Google online and just see, like. Like rumors, essentially. Yeah, and that's all it is. But <laughs> thanks for watching. This has been the Buck 19 special. I am the Aaron on the Movie Professor. I'm Expedition Aaron. Yeah, you mentioned it. You don't have your, like, odd coat on today. But <laughs> yeah, my odd, like. Now, don't, I'm not looking like Steven Spielberg today. Uh, no, it was chillier today. Earlier. It was chillier. I forgot to turn the heat up, right? <laughs> um, Matthew, still, again, hasn't changed. Uh, for me right now, it's, uh, it's time for tea. And, uh... Keep blank. <laughs> I was a little, uh, a little bit blank uh, while I was, like... Ooh, what was I going to say again? Uh, I could just sit here, right here, and the killer would come to me and just reveal themselves. I'd prefer it if you didn't do that. <laughs> no, no, no. I'll take a very personal interest in your case. <laughs> Great jabbles we watched. Yeah, it's pretty much completely false. So it's gonna be a terrible movie after this. Um, yeah, we gotta get your stuff ready too. Don't we? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> fucking. Um, yeah, we ha- have to cut sequence. Yeah. Um, <laughs> one of the other ones that we can do for the retrospective actually is uh, is actually a creep show, which has little known fact four technical movies. Uh, we can do one. We can do two. And we could talk about, in a more deep-like aspect, uh, the two different third films, <clears throat> Creepshow 3 and Tales from the Dark Side, the movie. As some of you may know, Tales from the Dark Side was pretty much Creepshow the show. Yeah. Uh, to the extent that like all the same people worked on it, and it was originally supposed to be called Creepshow. They just didn't have the like rights worked out, I believe. We could also probably do the Exorcist franchise. Yeah, we could that easily do that. one kind of spins off, too, because Exorcist 2... Is like the bastard child, the, the hated one, the series. Uh, yet William Peter Blady, that wrote Exorcist, actually made another film called The Ninth Configuration, which I actually picked up when I was in London. That's that he considers the spiritual successor. There's a couple films Exorcist. that are uh, <laughs> definitely like uh, series that can be very interesting. And we could actually take some of those like sequels, like the actual Creep Show Three and Tales from the Dark Side of the movie, and maybe we could compare them against one another. We could do little yeah. verses, which is a more as well. actual legitimate sequel. Interesting. 
would be very interesting to do some stuff like that. So let us know your thoughts. Yeah. Like, share, subscribe. You know, yeah. we, we do appreciate that. And when we get to, because we spend a lot of time like making this. Obviously, it's not just the making of the movie. <laughs> movie <laughs> make it a film <laughs> and of the podcast it's just it's the fact that you know we do this we upload these we watch these films ahead of time yeah we have to own these films <laughs> uh yeah but yeah and uh we'll be doing a lot more stuff we got some more remake uh rewatch to do and stuff yeah as well and uh just uh a bunch of other things you're gonna see in the channel in the uh, in the upcoming future yeah a lot of my stuff here i do with uh with matt because he's awesome with it <clears throat> got his pipe and he's ready to be introspective <laughs> <laughs> yes I am uh yep yeah, we will see you uh soon with more stuff and you know just let us know what you think exactly and I, I'm sure like they completely got their buck 19 worth out of that they did yep. thanks for watching guys the grilled it. cheese got a cheeseburger <laughs> The Italian special. Mama! <laughs> I hated that kid. Mama, we can set them on fire! They should have set Michael on fire. That's what they should have done. That's just, just like in Halloween, too. They should have set that Michael on fire instead. <laughs> Shot his eyes. Shot his eyes out. <laughs> Shoot his eyes out, goddammit. They're evil. Thanks for watching. For me right now, on the movie professor, and it's time for tea. This is Matt. He's going to sit back with his pipe and... <laughs> like where'd I go with oh, that? Well, I, I said the mama thing because we were like pretty much ready to end it. And I was like, I got it, and he's like, and that's gonna say something, and I'm like, oh, seamless, <laughs> seamless. Yeah. Thanks for watching.